Hi, I'm Alemi from Yayao Botanica and welcome back. Today we've got a fantastic video for you. Father of the world, Orisha Babaluaye and his correlation to the coronavirus. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, hit that bell for notifications to find out when my next videos are. So let's get started. So today, the subject that we're gonna talk about is Babaluaye. Such a special, special uh, subject for me and I'm so honored to be doing this video today. Uh, Babaluaye is an Orisha that is referred to as uh, St. Lazarus in Catholicism and in Christianity, but more so Catholicism from Cuba and uh, Brazil and other countries in the Americas. Babaluaye is an Orisha that there's not really a conclusive statement as to was he first Yoruba or was he first from Dahomey. But I'm gonna talk about from the Yoruba perspective. He's, uh, one of his names is Chopono. We know him as Chopona in the diaspora. Uh, Babaluaye is the name that I'm gonna use mostly for the video, in addition to kind of like a pet name, Babalu. His number is 17. He has a few colors, but his main color is brown. Fabric being sacred to him is burlap or sackcloth, purple, yellow, and of course, there's some variants in between for some people's paths who are in the tradition. It could be blue integrated in that as well. Um, his sacred feast day is December 17th. And for a lot of devotees, it will be the 17th of every month, but his sacred feast day is really December 17th. And so, you know, um, there are all these different pilgrims pilgrimages all over Cuba, um, different countries. You'll see people going to his cathedral to take offerings, to get cleansings, all of that around his feast day. So um, that's a really good time also to give offerings to him. If you're a person who you like Babaluaye, you feel drawn to him, or you maybe just want to appeal to him to help someone or to help yourself. He likes mixed beans, uh, black eyed peas, and all, all, all different kinds of mixed beans, uh, roasted corn, popcorn, all different kinds of herbs. This herb called Kundi Amor or Circe is one of the ones that is very sacred to him. They say that, as I said before, he originated in Yoruba land and he was thought of as kind of a womanizer. He was known for having a lot of women and kind of living a very risque and loose lifestyle. And Olodumare, who is considered as God in the Yoruba pantheon, did, uh, looked down on, on him in terms of what he was doing and wanted him to kind of, kind of clean up his lifestyle a little bit. So uh, Alegba felt sorry for him. Uh, because at the same time, uh, he was just kind of out in the street. After a while, um, Olodumare put kind of like a curse on him, per se, but not really a curse, more so a punishment, because a curse kind of gives um, a different kind of negative connotation, but more so kind of a punishment, like a parent would put, like, get your act together type of thing, right? So Babaluaye then started to be downtrodden. He seemed like very homeless. He had smallpox um, as a result of this punishment, which is one of the reasons why he's called the, the god of uh, smallpox and that he kind of uh, spewed smallpox across the world onto humanity as an epidemic. And so that's one of the reasons why epidemics are really sacred to Babaluaye. But I'm going to get into that in just a second. So um, Alegba felt sorry for him. You know, he'd walk in the street, people would throw water on him. He had all these different sores all over his body. He looked very homeless. He was poor, 
all of these different types of things. And so Alegba, or Elegua, as a, a lot of people know him as, he felt sorry for him, so he took him to the Babalao, one of the priests of Ifa. And he was told, what you need to do is you need to cleanse yourself with different types of beans. And once you've cleansed yourself, then you are going to go to a foreign uh, town or co foreign country, but countries really weren't there then. It was more areas. You're going to go to a foreign area and you will be made a, a king there. So he did the ebo or the work that it's called. Um, ebo is like spiritual work. So he did this work and then he went to Dahomey. And when he went to Dahomey, they made him a king. And so Babaluaye is an Orisha that he, he wants people to have humility and to have compassion for other people. Because in his story, he was a person who people did not have compassion to, and he wasn't humble when he was having his heyday. So these are qualities that he looks for or that are embodied in him through people. So, very, very interesting. In the transatlantic slave trade, when people were brought from um, Africa to the New World, there was kind of a switch where uh, the slaves would put his statue, St. Lazarus' statue, in front of the implements of the African deity, Baba Luaye, so that they could continue practicing their traditions without having uh, problems from the owners of the plantation or people who owned them. So they would put the Catholic saint in front and the African deity in the back. So that's where we get that fusion of St. Lazarus. And so there are a couple St. Lazaruses in the Bible, but the one very specifically that we're talking about is the one that is carried with the two dogs. Um, when he was, well, after he did the work and after he became a king, he received two dogs that were his companions, his companions, his protectors. And so in the New World, again, we see Babaluaye with his sores and his dogs as his companions. So here we see syncretism at its best, right? We're totally aligned. Sometimes people don't understand. They go, well, why do they have Catholic saints? Well, I'm not Catholic, so I'm really into the African thing. Why is that there? It's really important to kind of understand why that's there so that we, we see how our forefathers really kept these traditions alive. Baba Luaye is thought of as the Orisha that oversees infectious disease, smallpox, skin ailments, different types of eczema. Um, he also uh, is an Orisha that oversees things like leprosy and so on and so forth, right? But if we think about today, what are some of these, these things that we see? What are some of the, the, the signs that we see today of this Orisha? Well, let me just give you the sidebar about him. He's a road opener, right? And in Voodoo, they have him by the door because it said that when they were epidemics in the world, they would put him at the door and say, please keep this out of my home. So just like Alegba, sometimes he's kept at the door. But outside of that, he's an Orisha of healing. He's a Risha of healing spiritually and mentally. He has a very loving yet very stern uh, characteristics about him. Um, as I said before, he's like a king and he's a healer. And sometimes people see Baba Luaye in, in the material, right? They may see someone who's kind of shaking a bit or someone who has um, a part of their body maybe amputated and they're using a cane in some way, or homeless people th that look very downtrodden, very kind of beaten up, kind of streety, if you will, um, are also avatars, if you will, of Baba Luaye. So he's always using human beings 
to test human beings if we have humility, if we see charity, if we are not putting down people who are not in a good way. So these are some physical ways how we can see the Orisha, right? I would have to say that the coronavirus that we're dealing with today in 2020 is a modern day version of smallpox when it first infected the world. Why? Because there are three main cor cor correlations between smallpox and the coronavirus. And remember I said that Babalu IA is considered as the uh, Risha that spewed smallpox onto humanity, right? So here are my main things. One is high fever. That's the first thing that we all hear about. Oh, people are getting tested for their temperature before they go into their job in different places. High fever, head and body aches, and sometimes vomiting. Now, we don't hear that as the onset, but it is one of the symptoms. And so these three correlations are correlated to both, disease, to both viruses because they're both a virus. In addition to symptoms of, of the way that it is transmitted, not just the symptoms, but the way that it's transmitted is face-to-face -face contact through areas like the eyes, the nose, and the mouth facing someone else where that comes to the person or the virus sitting on an object, bedding, clothing, any kind of material. Those again, the three ways that, that it comes on and the three ways that it is received. So, Babalu IA is an Orisha of epidemics. We see the Orisha's vibration in the world right now. And so a lot of people come into these traditions, they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't really get it. You know, are they just people or what are they? They're energy, they're life, right? And so we have a perfect example of Baba Luaye being in the world, showing his power. And so I implore all of you who are in these traditions or interested in Orisha, definitely appeal to that aspect of the source to keep you safe. And I hope that you got a lot out of this video because this is one of my favorite Orishas to talk about. So give me a thumbs up, notifications. I'm dying to hear about your comments because a lot of people watching this video has a lot of relatives that are really into Baba Luaye in, a, in addition to themselves. So see you next time. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, definitely like us, give us a thumbs up, share us with others, send us your comments, come visit us in the store and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. See you next time.